Hello, my name is Jason Boswell from Microfocus. I'm part of the file analysis suite team. Today we're going to be talking about um, data discovery and just showing you a 10 minute demonstration. And the topic we're specifically going to cover is a data subject access request. In some parts of the globe, we call them consumer subject access requests. So the key scenario we're going to discuss today is we, we talk, we're dealing with the something that's appropriate to the data privacy officer um, or the compliance team. So um, they want to oversee data privacy and data protection um, throughout the organization um, to make sure all the organizations issues apply with the most appropriate way of dealing with data subjects. Um, so they need to ensure data protection activities are in place. They need to ensure training and compliance is in place. Um, awareness of, of data data privacy. And they need to, as a business line engagement um, process, they need to manage multiple information requests to assign, review, and act on critical data sets. Of course, driving this change is all these new regulations that, that across the globe that, that manage data privacy. And, we, and there's new roles that are in place to, to for data privacy. So, we understand what's uh, the reasons by doing those things, but uh, these new roles, they need tools to actually timely respond to consumer or data subject access requests. So that's what we're gonna show with inside the product today. So here's data discovery. Um, data discovery is a SaaS based tool available from Microfocus. Um, and it's part of the file analysis suite product. So, we we have some data that's already been connected to um, and really as part of my role to actually do a data subject access request i don't need to do an indexing all that, that information has been done already um, so i've connected a number of different repositories um, i've um, i've been able to index that information and i can actually see the the output of that with inside the analyzing times the analyze dashboard so if we have a quick look on this it's not absolutely necessary for a data subject access request, but it gives you a flavor of what's in the system. So we know that we've got, we've analyzed 11 repositories and 80% of it contains sensitive data. So when I'm looking for actual an individual's um, subject, data subject access request, so I'm looking for uh, information related to a, one particular individual. So we don't know where in across our whole repositories where an individual's data subject is by looking at the high level view. This is really about the, the view from the, um, that the uh, compliance team will be looking about to manage general risk. But when we're responding to an individual data subject access, we would move directly to the manage section. And inside the manage section, we've got different data processes. We've got general sensitive data governance, we've got risk assessments, we've got rot analysis, We've got a sampling that we can do for um, data assessments. But what I specifically want to do is a data subject access request. And these actually come predefined with inside the product. So you have a, a template uh, with inside the workspace templates um, for data subject access or consumer access requests. You can create your own templates. We provide you a few to get started. And of course, these are configurable as well. So let's look at one that we've done. So we've in this scenario, um, Jean Girel has contacted us and say, I need to, to ask you as an organization what information you've got on me. And if you do not need to keep that information, um, you need to remove this information. So that's a legal request that any consumer can make to any organization. So this is how we respond. So I've created this data subject access request. I've set a data source of where the information has come from. So where am I searching this information across? And I've set a data subject. And this is the most important aspect of a subject access request. So if we're looking for Jean Jurel's information, then we should actually, we need to set some parameters. And then the, really all you need is a first name, a last name, and, an, and a primary email address. That's the basics of all you need. And then we will search across all the systems looking for information that contains the name or the email address of this person. But there's no reason why we can't add multiple email addresses. Or if we know more information, if we know their customer number, if we know any of these, we can add as fields into the system. So if we know more information about them, 
any of their contact their information we can add that in here and this will further search for information that perhaps relates to this person but doesn't contain their name or their email but quite often the name and email is a very good starting point for doing a data subject access request so let's go back to the results and see what we found here inside so across all of this information we've actually found um, 28 items that have come back and 20 items that are related to an individual and the first thing we see is the timeline we see actually of all this quite a bit of the information relates to 2015 that relates to this particular individual do we need to keep this information if it's got that type of age so that gives us a first high level view we can see there's kind of file types that are on there as well so we we have quite a lot of email um, we go, so that will have come from the exchange system and we've got quite a few documents that may be sitting in, sitting in PowerPoint and then maybe sitting in a file system somewhere. This could be on-premise or in the cloud. This doesn't really matter to us. You know, our role, wherever the data is stored, we need to respond. So, um, okay, so we've got a view of that. Let's look at it from another point of view. Let's look at the risk associated with that data. So I'm not surprised if I'm searching for a data subject that 100% of the information is flagged. You know, one of our tags is, is, is a name. That's a partially sensitive item here. So uh, it's not surprised that every item is tagged. So it's where we, the ones that we could perhaps contain a little bit more information that we're concerned about is whether it contains medical data or passport information. We can, we can then start to categorize the information. There's different ways we can do. We can look at the map view, which shows you the bigger items are here, contain the more volume. So we've got most of it is addresses and uh, email addresses and names. And we can see how it's been categorized as well in terms of directly identifiable, indirectly, and things that need to be reviewed. Now, these categories relate to our workbook processes. So these are workbook categories, which I'll show you in just one second. So first of all, if I go back to the tagging view, and we can actually look in detail at these individual items. So just to be sure that A, they contain linked to an individual, and B, they actually contain the sensitive data. So we can look at these in terms of the content view. Just by clicking on this from the, I just clicked on the view from the chart there. So the, here we're just looking at just the items that contain a passport. And so there's one document that contains a passport that relates to, and you can see it actually does relate to this individual. You see it's picked it up from the name. It's all picked it up, also picked it up from the email address. But as well as that, we've actually got some other information. We've got a passport number. We've got a car registration number. And each of these items have, been, have made our risk score high. So this helps us. This risk score knows that if anything that's got a, a risk score, we could go between 0 and 100. And if this risk score is really high, we need to re it gives the feedback to the to the user to know that they need to take some form of action to control that risk. If we're concerned that the, some of these might be false positives, we can check them individually. So for the passport number, we can highlight that with inside the document. So we, we highlight the numbers here. We can do hit highlight when we've done the enrichment process, so, which allows us to look in detail and capture the actual values. Okay, so we've got different types of sensitive data with inside this portfolio. We've looked at passport numbers here. We can look at the whole data set here. So this is all information that relates to him. So some of them may contain information. Where this one, for example, this contains more information that perhaps relates to, so here, this is more of a travel invoice. So here is, we've got the email address. That means it's related to an individual, but you can see the kind of level of sensitive data that's inside this document as well. So now we need to start assigning how, what we should do with this information. So these are old travel invoices that need to be kept as a record. So maybe this we will add to a selected workbook to be created as a corporate record. We can see these emails though. Yeah, they're just emails that, that, that actually came from um, um, other parts of the system. So if we're not interested in the emails and we're just in this instant interested in the invoices, 
then that changes our view of what we need to see. So information that contains more information that we're interested in. If I look at, and we've got different views, we can look at this at an item level or a document level or a conversation view. Conversation view is very useful for looking at, e for looking at uh, email addresses where it groups all the conversations together. Let's say these documents, you know, they're just email notifications, newsletters. Do we really need to keep them? You know, they're all they're doing, they have no value to the business. Let's remove them from the system. So let's add that to a workbook, but let's pick the to be removed section. This doesn't automatically clear these out of the system. So these give it, assigns these to different sections. You notice these ones, are, the blue ones are statically defined and the, the, these ones, are, the orange ones are automatically classified. So there was one item that contained a passport and we don't have anything with credit card details in. So this one that, that contains a passport number is automatically assigned. We might want to automatically do a, do a particular action based on that. Let's look at a couple of these options. The ones that we made we decided need to be a corporate record. We can send to a target, say, uh, and choose the most appropriate. Um, so we don't have, so these appropriate classifications associated with these eight, these items. If they need to be removed, we can pick the delete action. In each of the actions, we actually set a reviewer. We don't automatically delete from the system. It goes back to the information owner, and this is a re as a workspace reviewer because they've got that permission. They will remove that, and once that's executed, this, then it will be. Um, reported back on. So if we look back at the reporting, any of these actions that we take are audited with inside the system. And the final thing, which is quite often important when you're doing a consumer access request, is to report on what you found and the actions you've taken. So each one of these, you can produce a, re well, for every workspace, you can produce a report on the actions you've taken. Very useful, like I said, for a, doing a, a data subject access request and this report can be then attached to a response back to the consumer to say we found this information on you we don't detail the the list of documents you can get the list of documents out but the, we found this is the, this is what we search for this is the information we found the and these are the actions we've taken so so many of them were deleted some of them we put on hold some of them were, were sent to target to be created as records so just to go back to our, just to summarize where we've been here, we've actually done um, uh, my sales, my system administrators have connected to index the, this information. We analyze that information. We looked at it from a high level point of view, but when we're doing a data subject access request, we concentrated on the manage section. We look for some information, we took some actions and then report on the actions that we've taken. Okay, so thanks very much. And I'll speak to you all soon.